Russell Manser was a career criminal and one of this country's most notorious bank robbers. At 15 years old, he was sent to jail. By the time he'd turned 50, he'd spent half his life incarcerated. He was caught up in one of those vicious cycles. Last week, he was back behind bars. But not in the way you might think. He's turned his life around and he wants to be part of the solution. He also tells a pretty cracking story. Russell, many thanks for joining me. How does one, I might ask, learn to rob a bank, for starters? I am... Um, hi, thanks for having me, firstly, Erin. Um, I'd done my apprenticeship in uh, the uh, boys' homes in, in New South Wales, in particular, Darrick, and um, I was sent to Long Bay Prison as a 16-year-old for stealing a Porsche. And um, I guess, you know, that's where I um, done my apprenticeship. I, I, I was sort of um, housed around... <clears throat> older men and that sort of uh, uh, older prisoners and um, they basically just told me what the go was, a, go, a blow by blow and, um, you know, I grew up in Mount Druitt Sea and um, bank robbers were t treated like return war heroes and, and they, they were the only people that were like in their sort of areas that were sort of ever getting ahead in life. So that sort of appealed to me from a young age. Talk to me about this concept of being a criminal but having a conscience. Uh, you were told to be polite whilst robbing these banks. How does that work? Yeah, well, manners cost you nothing, my mother used to tell me. And, um, <laughs> and um, you know, but I just think the older blokes in prison would tell you, you know what I mean, what you'd want to do is you don't want people to panic because that'll cause trouble. If you go in there yelling and screaming and, and, and traumatising people, they're going to get traumatised anyway, but... If you're going to do that sort of thing, people will panic and, and do something silly, might charge you or something like that, and someone might get hurt. And they said, you want to sort of avoid those sort of situations. And, um, you know, that's what I did. I think I, I think I got the dubious name of the gentleman bank robber. Tell me about the time you broke out of jail. I mean, I've seen it happen in movies, but clearly not in real life. Well, I... Didn't really like my um, abode at the time, and I thought, well, I, I would check out and um, and, um, <laughs> and staying in prison, staying staying in prison by choice was not something I wanted to participate in, and um, so I decided to, when I was going to court one day, um, have a go at running away. So um, an old SAS bloke just showed us a little trick, and he and he and what he did was uh, he said, just get a handful of salt and throw it, throw it in someone's eyes, and we had a few test runs, and there was a few uh, crash test dummies in there. And what it did was people covered, they, like, they covered up and give us that one second that we could do. So we came off a prison van that was getting unloaded on the street in uh, camp, camps here in Sydney and threw the salt in the police officer's eyes. They gave us enough time to run around and we got around and got past them and, uh, and we got away. And I um, subsequently got apprehended six weeks later jumping off a bus in Alice Springs dressed as a uh, Swedish backpacker. Oh, so, so the disguise didn't work, clearly. No, no, they were on to me from... But what happened was, I, look, I, I just thought, you know, out, out there in Alice Springs, I thought I would try the Swedish backpacker. I put the Akubra hat on with the, Akubra, with the corks and the I Love Australia T-shirt and the, and the uh, second-hand hiking boots from a place called Pine Creek and, um, and uh, <laughs> just tried my best to blend in, but unfortunately it didn't work with a head like this. <laughs> now, look, as I said at the start, you do tell a, a great story. We are not here to glorify your behaviour. You were the first person to say it was horrific, which is why you are now turning your life around and you've done that and you're now trying to stop other kids from getting into mischief. What would have saved you from a life of crime and jail and always running, always hiding, this sick feeling in your stomach? Look, yeah, and, and I agree, Aaron. I, not for one second do I uh, try to glorify crime or anything like that. Uh, on the contrary, I'm trying to uh, educate young kids that it ain't the way to go. And, and I live by uh, the motto that an honest man's pillow is his peace of mind. And, um, and that's working well. You don't want... They, these kids don't want this life. It's not like the movies. And, uh, you know, and you know what? And I, I was talking about it today on social media, you know, out of every crime I've ever come across, not one of them's ever really... Not one of them's high flight multi-millionaire or anything. It all gets taken off, you know, some way or another. It's just not meant to be. And um, what would, um, what, 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 are, like, and what is scary at the moment is this commentary on these under these kids getting locked up and putting them in prisons, in, in, in particular in Western Australia. That's scary. And and the commentary and the and the views and the comments people are making on it are really. In, in really what scary. way, Russell? Like, what 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 upsets you about it? 
Oh, for me, it's triggering. I went to I went to prison um, at a, as a sixteen year old. Um, mm. I went to Long Bay Prison as a sixteen year old, and some pretty horrific things happened to me that changed the trajectory of my life. It really changed the course yeah. of my life. And what scares me is, look, you, you, look, I'm the I'm the cake that you prefer, pre, pre, prepared earlier. I, I'm a classic mm. example as why you don't send kids to jail at a young age. Yeah, it doesn't end well. It doesn't end well. It doesn't work. No, yeah, and, and you, you talk about the fact that you clearly weren't rehabilitated in those early days. You were clearly very vulnerable to be taken advantage of and, and I guess, groomed to be this life of crime that you then ended up living. You're now doing a podcast, which is uh, incredible, the Stick Up podcast. You're trying to help other kids. You're trying yep. to stop them. You're visiting jails and helping other kids. So keep doing that incredible work. Thank you so much for sharing your story yep. with us. I really appreciate it. Hey, Erin, thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate your time. It's such a pleasure. The Stick Up podcast is what it's called.